<laughs> She's ready for a frisbee play. There's, I, <laughs> they, you know, um, those are the boots of a hardworking man. <laughs> it reminds me of my favorite poem, which someday I promise to share. But um, today, and with Debbie's assistance and company and Penny Pop Pop, I just wanted to talk about something I haven't talked about very much, but is so very important and essential, I think, to successful figstering. And that is the subject, the subject, the topic of fig hygiene. Let's call it that. Let's call it fig hygiene. Because I get a lot of questions about do I get SWI and, or SWD and do, and do I get, uh, uh, you know, sour flies and hornets and a, a lot of flies and things? And I, I really, I really do not. I think some people, when I tell them, they're kind of astonished and they, maybe they think I'm exaggerating, uh, but I'm not. Uh, I don't have many problems with that. We all have occasional problems with these things, especially after all of, like, say, the rain that we've been getting. We've been getting a lot of rain. We've got we've gotten a lot of rain, and I made a mistake of watering the figs too pretty hard about a week before the rains hit from that from the remnants of Hurricane Debbie. <laughs> Look at that. What do you want a tummy rub? And she wants a tummy rub now. And look, she wants a little tummy rub song that we made up. <laughs> <laughs> and she's something. She just likes. She loves. She just soaks up that attention. And uh, I, I've suffered some losses from all of that rain. But what I do is I make sure that I maintain my fig trees vigorously in the category of sanitation. And what does that mean? It means that I, I go through my figs every day, and I look for anything that's spoiled. I look for anything that is overly ripe that I've missed, which I do miss figs all the time. And uh, they get overly ripe and go bad, and then they will attract. Yeah. Of course, if you leave them there, if you don't, if you don't pick them up, this one's just shriveled and dried. But look, if you squeeze that, see the juice in there? That's spoiled. It's a little spoiled. Oh, well, let me see. If you squeeze it, there's a little bit of spoiled juice coming out of that. So that one gets thrown away. I put them in a bucket, of course, and I go through and I remove anything that's saturated with water or overly ripe that I've missed or neglected to pick when I should have. And by doing that, I keep my fig trees very, very, very clean and devoid of anything that will attract pests that unwelcome pest that I don't want any part of, period. I don't want that. I, I don't want a bunch of flies. You, you're going to get some when they spoil. You, there's nothing you can do about it. But you see, I don't have any uh, sour flies or the SWD. And I, I don't, you can see that there's just no hornets and there's nothing attacking my fig trees. I mean, not, not to the point where I can't handle it. And the reason why is fig sanitation. I just go through, now these are nice, beautifully ripe figs that need to be picked. And Debbie's gonna help me pick some of these figs because we're going on a little trip tomorrow. Now here's a bad fig, look. See this? Yeah, now don't throw that. Look at that. I'll get it for the door because I Some kind of a creature it. attacked that and left it and yeah. it's now it's turned south, what's yeah. that? I'll get it because I don't want the door getting left. Okay, see? So we, we clean up. Yeah. We clean up the mess after ourselves. And, and if any are on the ground, you, you pick this one's up a good. Too. This one's a good fig, Deb. If you, this is a delicious fig. Oh, wow. Look at that. Now, that's a nice one. What's Why'd up? Why'd you have to open it up like that? <laughs> I, yeah, she gets mad at me when I don't slice them <laughs> nice and neat with a knife. Because I, I, I never I have, have my a... Hands full of dirty I, I don't have a third arm with a third <laughs> hand. If I did, I, I believe me. You know, I do a neat job all yeah. the time. Well... I get by. 
Mmm. Yeah. Mmm. Well, that's just luxuriously sweet. Mm -hmm. Would you? And, and yeah, creamy. Yeah, right I'll get something in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He's got to wash her things. <laughs> yeah. I don't. The one time I didn't, I felt sick. <laughs> I can't it. Oh, come the on. One time I tried when was that? I don't that. remember anything it like that. Crazy. It's psychological, Dad. No, it wasn't. It's psychosomatic. No, it wasn't that. Oh, look at that. That yeah. looks good. Man, they look good. So, sanitation. Fig sanitation. Here's another one that's just dried to perfection. Look at that. Woo wee. Man, that's okay, it. Come up with what There's it. Look at all these beautiful figs. Debbie, we've got to get these figs picked and bring them with us. Look at that. Oh, they're just that. They're they're at that second, that absolute second of perfection. Look at them. Look at these figs. They are at their peak perfection. And we will pick them. We will pick them. And we will mosey around and mosey about and get I'm to the. Get, get rid of these. these are the All right. Okay. Good. Okay. I'll just. You're gonna you're gonna play with the frisbee in one minute. I don't have time to make a long. How many times have I said that? Yeah. Then? Yeah. <laughs> Whenever you say that, then it's like uh, extra long. <laughs> and it goes into that category. They all yeah. go into that category, don't yeah. they? Well, I have to say a few things because I I want to <laughs> share. Always something that... Look! Look how nice. Yeah, they're beautiful. The, the fig uh, garden of cuttings. Yeah. Let me just sit down here. This tired old guy from working all day and cutting the grass and doing the trim. My God, I, I tell you, it's a full time job this time of year. Yeah, it never ends. Ooh. It never ends. It never. It just. And then when it does end, mm -hmm. it starts back over again. Yeah. That's the terrible. That's why I said you just it seems like you just cut yeah. the grass. I just did it. Up. Well, it does look nice, though, doesn't it? Yeah. In my menagerie, my. Okay, fig, this way. fig and thing, this way. fig and persimmon paradise here, and uh, Debbie has her little hummingbird they feeders like all. Tree to, yeah, to, uh, yeah. They've been th this the year. They've the, the the hummingbirds just sit. They yeah. they roost, you know, Where's all day that? long in the in the in the uh, yeah okay, in the here. persimmons tree. Let's go. But uh, these are the black madara. I've talked about these before, just in case. Those of you that keep an eye on me, and boy, do I need that, um, will recall and maybe be curious about their progress. And these are the um, black madera. There's three of them in here. I should have planted more. These will be gifts. And uh, th this, these are um, uh, Italian 258, and they're and they're beautiful. Look at look look at them. They're, they're just so successful. And I have to tell you, you know, the, the technique here was so complicated. It really was complicated. And I don't know, I might have to write a lengthy book about all of the details of how to do this correctly. I'm being facetious, of course. All I did was take some cuttings and stick them in the ground. That's it. I talked about it in my other videos. Now there's a couple that didn't do now this one don't mistake it this one's new this one's new this is desert king this is desert king when i say new i don't know week 10 days I don't, i'm not sure and and over there's a, a desert king these are new entries i kept them close so i would be able to separate them this is an old this was one of the first uh italian 258s that i put in the ground and so was that one now that one's not dead after all this time. And I know that's going to that's gonna be okay. It's got roots under it, and it's going to sprout this summer. And then I'm going to protect it with, I'm going to build up a layer of hay or of uh, grass clipping so that it winters over and doesn't freeze. So that in the spring I can dig it up, you know, uncover it and move it to a pot. These are going to make it too. They're just so beautiful. These cuttings are just thick and beautiful. This one is got a little bit of green on it, but you know what? I'm going to. I'm actually going to remove it. If I had a shovel, I'll do it next time. If I had a shovel, I'll dig it up nicely instead of just rip it up. Because I'm telling you, it has roots, but I don't need it. It's just something that I don't need. 
another one of. I've got these four beautiful ones that just turned out so nicely. Look, look how big they are. These are nice little trees. <laughs> and I wouldn't be surprised if they sprouted figs before the summer's over. Okay. Now here's another uh, older that I put in, Italian 258. And I may dig that up too or give it to someone because I don't need it. And there was one that I just pulled out that was over here. It was another Italian 258 and now it's gone. And that's another one of the uh, Desert Kings. And over here, oh, look at that. I mean, they're, these were put in like a month later after this. These were a month late. These were planted just before the solstice, okay? Uh, and these were planted three or four weeks afterwards. And these are Vali San Juan, and every single one of them has sprouted. These three, one, look at that, there's two. This one's making little figs. This was just a piece of wood that I put in there. Look at that, see that? Yeah, maybe four inches long. And it's making sprout, look, it's Vali San Juan. My Adriatic, my uncle's Adriatic. Here's another where I just put a piece of wood in there. And look at the shoots coming up. Look at that. Look at the shoots coming up there. There and here. <laughs> the shoots are coming from the ground. Look at that. And this one's doing marvelously. So cute. Okay, so there's my little fig buddies. I could have planted a hundred. I really could have. And who knows, someday I might you know, distribute them, you know, get someone to help me and turn over the proceeds to them so that I can get my precious heirlooms and varieties, my fig friends uh, on the plant level out there for all of you figsters to enjoy someday, maybe. And uh, these are earmarked. I'm going to make gifts of them. I've, I've made many gifts of many figs, fig trees for decades and decades and decades. It's just what I always did and what we always did traditionally growing up. You know, in an Italian family. Not that you have to be an Italian to do that, you know. I'm sure many people out there, maybe many that are listening, Grew up in an environment like that, a rich environment, one of precious memories and experiences that we will never, ever forget that have worked themselves indelibly into the, the essence of what we are as human beings, uh, the things that make and form character, that make us the exact human beings and kinds of people that we become later in life. All of those things are provided to us by our experiences and our genetics and all of the combination, the combination of all of those things that create us as persons, as uh, characters, as individuals. And you don't lose that. That sort of thing you just take with you all the way to when everything just, well, when, when lights are out, <laughs> lights out. Yeah, you don't lose that sort of thing. And uh, there's my little helper. Are you ready to pick some of these figs? Yeah. I, I, I'm rambling. I promised a short video, and I broke my promise as usual. <laughs> All my friends out there, I think they know and expect as much. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, there's that tree that Debbie and I pruned that big branch off of. And look, it formed a protection. I didn't do this. I didn't do anything. Look at that. Dad, come look at this. Wow. I, I haven't seen this. Wow. It's like a it's like it's its own tar. Look at that. It 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 healed its own wound. I can't look at that. I didn't do a thing to that. That's I just look at that. That is amazing. That is. It's thick too. <laughs> it's, it's like hard. a professional job. That's that's like, yeah. It just the center's not, but yeah. but that's all right. That's amazing. You know? But look look at look at the persimmons, the the uh the Kita's gift for Simmons, oh, are going to be so luxuriously superb. <clears throat> I can't wait. Okay, come out there. Look at all that. Out there. What's she doing? Oh, up, up. Oh, Look at that, all these persimmons. 
Look at that. So it was worth saving the tree and keeping it from leaning lopsided. And I took the stress off of it. And now there's still plenty of fruit. And the fruit is just of superb character. Look, it's, it's without any blemishes whatsoever. No cracks, no imperfections. It's just perfect. These are perfect fruits. Look at them. Perfect Nikita's gift. And I just can't wait. And they're all over the place on this tree. And I've got another Nikita's gift back there on the side of the barns. So I have that. And then I have a, one over here that I, I grafted a few years back. And this is just a reserve tree. And I've got it leaning up another tree, which I, I want to tell the story about that other tree. Because Debbie and I went through great pains to get a copy of that. And uh, <clears throat> it's a, a very interesting um, moderate moderation, or I call a modified American persimmons. So I have them growing up together now, together, they sh which I shouldn't do because it's this larger American persimmons is impeding the growth of the Nikita's gift, which I I uh, grafted to another of the American persimmons rootstock, and. It's just a backup, but if anything were to happen to any of my other Nikitas, I could get this thing going and maybe cut the other, or maybe I'll cut this one out and let that grow. And uh, this one hasn't yielded any fruit yet, but this is how it goes when you're a gardener. Now get back to the subject of being extreme in my measures on fig sanitation. There's a, there's a fig that's no good, okay? It just, it ripened, but it spoiled from all that rain that we had. Uh, many of them, some of them did spoil. Not a great many of them, fortunately, but some do. So you gotta get rid of those. You gotta clean them up. Fortunately, I fared pretty well. And I told the story how Debbie and I came out, even when it was raining. And we picked a, a whole bunch of figs and made fig bread. And we made a lot of jam, a lot of preserves rather, and distributed that. And boy, it was of high quality. We should have, Deb, we should have showed that. We should have incorporated that into one of the videos, oh, yeah. the, the fig preserves. Yeah, they turned out really good. You know, because they, they turned out, aren't they beautiful? Yeah. I mean, I could show them. I could show yeah. a couple of them. Yeah. Maybe I'll just will. Mm -hmm. But, okay, see, fig sanitation. If you don't want a lot of bugs and a lot of pests. Yeah, and, and, listen, and look at that. You have to clean it up off the ground, too. Yeah, okay, that's a good point. She's, yeah. You're right. And when you see something on the ground, I pick them up. I do, too. We, yeah. we, we pick them up. We throw them out in the field. Yeah. Or we bury them in the garden for fertilizer for next year. You know, we put them in the ground. But if you do all of that, you're going to maintain a very, very, very successful harvest and uh, without without a lot of these pests that many people do suffer seriously from again remember i mean everyone experiences it from time to time it's just nature it's the way it is it's the nature of the beast it's going to happen but if you want to keep it to a minimum you just have to practice vigilant fig hygiene and you've got to pick them up on the ground and pick them up pull them off the tree Get rid of them, throw them away, put them in, in the garden, whatever you got to do from their fertilizer. Look, there's another. That's that's a completely wasted fig. Look at that. See, there it is. Okay? That one's no good. So get rid of it. Look how many ones, look how many oh, are on here that are absolutely perfect. Yeah, there's a rotten one here. Too. Yeah, we got to pick these now. Yeah, this one's so, all mushy. Yeah, so do you want me to? It is? Yeah, yuck. Let's see. Show it to them. Oh, it's, it's all Goodbye. Yeah. You're gone. Yep. Yeah. You're going into the garbage heap. Yeah. All right. Should I get the maybe get the video, uh, bring the video in the house and look at the uh, uh, preserves? Jam, yeah. Maybe. Yeah. All right. Just on that. Uh... <laughs> Popsy, hey, what are you looking for over there? A fig? <laughs>
Where is she at? What are you looking for? Uh, I know what you're looking for. Oh, there we go. Aren't they nice? Aren't they beautiful? Look at the color. And uh, if anybody wants the recipe, I'll I'll post it in the future, along with Debbie's. Yeah, you still have to put the. Bread. I did get a lot of requests for Debbie's fig bread. Yeah, you have to put that. With on fig also. bed, fig cake, it's like mm -hmm. a mixture between. It's a cross yeah, between. Yeah, between a cake and a bread. Cake and bread, it's so good. It's and good. Toast it with butter. It's delicious. Oh, it's gosh! I mean, it, we've gotten this recipe now. With after, cream cheese icing, both of those would be. And she said, and you have the option of putting a cream cheese icing, and let me tell you, we've perfected that recipe over the years, and it is. So so delicious, scrumptiously delicious. I love that fig cake. It's so good. And so we will get you the recipe. And Debbie, she hand wrote it out because so many people are friends too and relatives will ask for it all the time. So, um, I, I wait, I, I, if she has it written out, I'll put it on the video right now. Hold on. You're a lucky dog. What's that? I was going to type it out because my handwriting might be uh, hard to read. Well, oh, let me. Aren't you, aren't you able to like post I gotta it bring on it there down. somehow? Yeah, I will. But for now, the, the, some people have been eager to get it. So let me try to. Let me go back a little bit. I don't Hold know if that's still if you can. There you are. You should be able to freeze the video. And you should be able to read. You want to explain anything about it, or just mm, let it... I wrote all the directions are there, so it's... the directions but are there. My, my handwriting's all not that great. Well, so we're we're good at printed out. In yeah, time. maybe well, you can have... post it. On God there knows we site. have no time. I have no time, none, and I'm exhausted. Really, it's just that time of year. So let me just finish this video. Okay, Deb. Thanks for that. Mm -hmm. Hey, Deb. We have a couple um, Peter's honey over here. If you want to, we'll get them too. We've got some. <laughs> That's a happy dog. <laughs> she is. She's a lucky dog. Okay. Gosh, we picked a lot of tigers. We have picked a lot of tigers this year, and the rain has hardly done a thing to them. They they are this. Please, everyone, remember. Because I am really so pleased with uh, LSU Tiger. Every single year has just been a joy. And I've had this for many years, both in a pot and in the ground in various locations. I've got this in the, behind the barns too. And it's just, it's just held up. Where am I? <laughs> it's held up wonderfully. It really truly has. And... I've really enjoyed eating these. Uh, I enjoy eating all the figs, but I've, I've just tell you, it's held up so well. So if any of you have had experiences, bad experiences with spoiled figs after the rains and want to add a fig variety to your collection that almost guarantees that it's going to be resilient in that regard, then I highly recommend this LSU Tiger and the other varieties that I've mentioned too in the past. There you go. Oh, you want to... no, this is the big one. Okay. Big so, um, I I have some Peter's honey here. I've, I've been eating them for the last, for a long time. You know, I've been eating a lot of these. And I've been eating a lot today too. In fact, I have to tell you, I, I have to stop eating figs for a while. I just can't eat anymore. And uh, I've been eating so many of them. Look! Look at these beautiful figs. Would you please look at these figs? Where, where? Look at that! Look at these beautiful, huge, voluptuously delicious. <laughs> Go away, Aunt. Honey dripping. See the honey? Look at the honey. Honey dripping delights. So many of them, all over the place. Peter's honey, and I've been picking them and picking them and picking them. And uh, I'm going to pick some now and take them with us. Look at this. Look at look at the size of these darn things. Now that's what you call a perfect, see the honey? 
That's what you call a perfect fig. I mean, not a perfect Peter's honey fig. I mean a perfect fig. That is a perfect representation. There you are. <laughs> Where are you going? What's it? Okay. <laughs> All right. She's bringing something to my attention. Yeah. I, I know. And uh, a perfect fig. Okay, uh, over here. And no, come on. I. What's that? I can't have that. That's no good. Do I'm going to. I'm going to break this one open too, just the way. Okay, come away from there. See Deb? There's another one. That I'm not going to cut nicely yeah. with a with a knife. Look at that. It <laughs> doesn't look good like that. It looks good. I am sure that the experienced fixers out there have done this a thousand times themselves. Yeah. It's, it's how we do it when you don't have an extra hand available. Yeah, I'm holding the phone here. Look at all that. Debbie, you want a bite of this? Yeah, not right now. I'm, I'm... I'm all sugared out, but here I'm going to, I, I can't resist Peter's honey. I just can't. I can't do it. Mmm. Gosh. It doesn't matter how many figs I eat, they're still delicious. Let's go over here, Papa. Mmm. Over here. Dev, that was delicious. Yeah, You should have shared that with me. I see a couple really, really ripe ones back there too. We'll get them, Dad. We'll get them. Did you see these two? You want one of these? These are perfect. These are like at their absolute okay. second of perfection. What's that? I'm talking to the dog. Okay. Well, we're going to clean up the figs now and finish our sanitation. And we're going to pick some wonderfully, perfectly ripened figs. More. And... I'm going to end this video. So, all of you out there, thank you for your visit. You know I like your visits. I enjoy all this. It's been a great privilege to introduce you to some of the concepts and methods, the methodologies and the strategies that I have put to use in growing my fig orchards and that uh, have led to successful harvests uh, for many years and continue to do so in recent times. And I'm so, just so happy. Yeah, fig, look, fig sanitation, look. Goodbye. It's got to be thrown away. It's got to be thrown away. There's plenty of nice ones there, but there's some bad ones. Get rid of them. Here's a couple that have fallen to the ground. This is, here's a perfect example. Okay, let's, let's gather them up. We're going to throw these away, and they won't attract insects, undesirable insects, and we will thus maintain a very clean and efficient and successful harvest. Right, Deb? Yeah. Did I get it all? Yeah. All righty. All right. So with that... What are you doing? What are you doing over there? She wants me to throw up for her. Oh, <laughs> go ahead. You want to throw up? Silly. Mommy's going to throw up for you. Can you go ahead. <laughs> Mommy's going to take care of that. Uh oh. Oh, you're not going to throw up. Okay, you go get it. Go get it. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> She's a lucky dog. She is a lucky dog. <laughs> okay, well, thank you. I still have some Celeste figs of this variety. Oh, you know what? I should I should really show my other Celeste, my favorite Celeste. Hold on. This is just incidental. I'll just add it in because my champagne have been ripening and I have been devouring these champagne. And I have so enjoyed them. I love this variety. I have sung the praises of this variety, this LHU Champagne. And uh, I've been eating a lot of them. They've, they've gotten ripe. And I just I just tell you, 
I just love them. I, I love the Champagne. I love the Holly A. This is one of my favorite trees in the world, though. This this is just my dad's Celeste that I've talked about, and I just don't know why this tree is just so tasty. It's different than any. They're large. I picked some much larger than these, much larger than these. They're large, and they're just they're just so rich in flavor. They're different. Hmm. And when they're ripened to perfection, which is the only way that you should be eating Celeste, when they are ripened, I've got this thing on my leg, Dab, it's on my shoe. When they're ripened to perfection, and let me show you one. Mm. Look at that. See the splits and cracks? Look at that. Oh, look, look in there. Look at that. I'm going to pop these off. Here's another one. Right here. Let me, let me pick that. Look, look at that. Look how beautiful these are. Now, the ones that several weeks ago, when they were getting ripe, they were actually much larger than this. But these, these are still very large Celeste. They're nice size. But it's not just that. You know, it's how do they handle the rain? Not all Celeste are equal, believe it or not. Some Celeste are more susceptible to nematodes. So at my other property, my um, zone 7B, uh, it's very important that I have a certain variant there, which has been there for hundreds of years on the island and has learned to be resilient and resistant to nematodes. And when I plant this one, this tree, which was my father's tree, which I've told you the story about, the $10,000 tree that we used to call. My whole family that's listening remembers this tree because no one could ever possibly forget it. Not this exact tree, but this is a cutting from the tree. But anyway, um, if I plant this one on that location where the nematodes, it doesn't do as well. Here it flourishes like you can't believe and the, the taste and the rain can't hurt it. It's just amazing. It's an amazing variety. And the other that comes from there, which is another variant, uh, it grows here nicely. It grows here nicely. But this one won't grow there because the other one is resilient to nematodes. So it grows there. It grows where there's nematodes or no nematodes. But this one doesn't grow where there's a lot of nematodes. It doesn't grow as well. All those little things, those you, you know, you learn to be observant and you have to figure these things out. And once you do, it makes a big difference in your success ratio, okay, and your experiences. But look at that. How, how could something like that not be delicious? Now, these aren't even peak perfection ripened yet. They would have been tomorrow, but I'm picking them now just for video sake. But that's, they're still superbly ripened. They're still superbly, they still taste exquisite. You know, they're, they're really, really high quality. Let's take a bite. Look at that. Beautiful. And they're just so good. But when I eat these, when they're perfect, and that's so good. It's such a refreshing variety. It's just refreshing. It perks me up. I just like it. I could just eat so many of these. You know, there's no limit to how many of these I can eat. Some of the varieties I, I do, there is a limit. But, oh, pita honey. Some more pita honey. Okay. And there, we're getting right. Um, what was I saying? Oh, when, when they get to the point where they're just absolutely perfect, and I just went through here and ate them all. I've been eating these all the time. Every single day I come in here. I, and what I want to say, I'm going to make a statement. You ready? Now, for what it's worth. Oh, there's one. There's one that's almost at that peak perfect moment, second of perfection. Mmm. 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 When these get to that point, I'm going to say it. It's one of the most 
delightful and enjoyable figs that I, 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 I eat. I just, I, I love when I get to this tree. I love it. So, <laughs> I, I love all of them. You know I do. But I'm telling you, something about Celeste, when you get it at its peak second of, of performance, is that certain unique flavor that I, I've just learned to crave. Maybe it's a, a developmental issue where I've grown accustomed to the flavor and it's grown on me over the years and I so enjoy it and, it, and I expect it. And I formed a craving that can only be satiated by eating a lot of these figs. But I just enjoy it. I'll tell you, it's just a different type of experience. You know, it, it, it's just refreshing. I, I don't, I just wish I could find the words. I, I wish I could be a little bit more articulate about it. These would be perfect tomorrow. Okay, these champagne. This tree's do, doing nicely. It's a couple years in the ground. Next year, this is going to come into its own. I can tell this is going to be doing fabulously. I can tell. I can tell by all the formations. I can tell that this tree is going to be very, very nice next year. If the winter doesn't kill it, I hope it doesn't. Please survive. Uh, all of you, all of these figs, I hope they survive. Good day. Thank <laughs> you.